hear a telephone conversation about a car insurance claim. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon. What are insurance? This is Janet speaking. How may I help you? Yes, hello. Um, I would like to make a claim on my car insurance, please. Certainly, sir. First of all, I'd like to inform you that all of our calls are recorded for monitoring and training purposes. Is that OK? That's OK. Could you please tell me your full name? Sure, it's Mr Bennett Fisher. OK, sorry, how do you spell your surname? It's spelled F I S. C-H-E-R. Great. Thank you. I see that you have taken out a third-party fire and theft premium with us on a 2013 light blue Volkswagen Passat. Is that OK? Uh, yes. Well, almost. Uh, the colour is not light blue. It's light green. OK. Thank you for updating your information with us. What is the nature of your claim with us today? Last weekend, I had driven up to York on business and left my car in a monitored car park. However, it was only monitored until 8pm and I did not return to collect it until 9.30pm, after which no car park staff were present. When I arrived at the car park, my car wasn't there. It must have been stolen. I see. Were there any valuable items left in your car which could have been seen from outside? Well, I had recently bought quite an expensive radio for my car, but the front panel is detachable and I always stow it in my glove compartment. So, no, there wouldn't have been anything valuable on display. OK, Mr Fisher. Thank you for that information. I'm going to send you some forms through the mail for you to fill in. Before I can do that, I need to ask you a couple more questions. Is that OK? Of course. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 6 to 10. Thanks, Mr Fisher. First of all, could you let me know your policy number, please? Of course. I have it right here. It's G34C245. G34C245. Thanks. And the type of claim? Shall we say stolen car? Yes, the car was definitely stolen. I reported it to the police immediately. I actually have the report number here, if that's of any use. No, not right now. But keep hold of that, as we will need to see a copy of the police report eventually. Which police station did you report the offence at? York Police Station. Was it your first time in York? No, but it was the first time I'd driven there. Uh, I usually take the train. Were you aware that the car park was only manned until 8pm? No, I, I was not aware of that. Were there any signs put up on the premises that informed car owners of the risks of leaving their cars after normal operating hours? Yes, but they said the car park was going to be guarded until 10pm, at which point the entrance is barred so no cars can come in or out. Was any reason given for that sudden change? The police informed me that the staff on duty that night had left on an urgent call. I believe it was something about a family member being admitted to hospital. Were there any personal items left in your car? Yes. First of all, there was the car radio I mentioned before. Ah oh, yes, of course. Anything else? Just some CDs and an old jacket. Right. Thank you, Mr Fisher. I have everything I need for now and will send these forms out to you shortly. 
When you get them, please fill them out with as much information as you can, and where possible, include copies of any relevant documents to support your claim, such as police reports and registration details. Once you have returned that to us, we can then start to assess whether you will be eligible to receive compensation. Do you have any further questions for me today? No, that's all.、Uh, thanks for your help. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a lecture on bird migration. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions eleven to seventeen. My lecture this evening will focus on the migration of birds. That is, how birds fly in big groups from different parts of the world at certain times of the year. In the first part of the lecture, I'll talk about the reasons why birds migrate, when they migrate, and which parts of the world they migrate from and to. To start with. Why do birds migrate? Well, there are two main reasons. One, they migrate to look for food, and two, they travel to parts of the world that are more suitable for breeding. In fact, these reasons are closely linked. As you can imagine, when birds are breeding, they need extra food to feed their young. And in the spring, in the cooler climates of Europe, there is a lot of food for birds, especially insects. So generally, during the spring. Birds fly up from the tropics, which are hot, to cooler climates in the north. They stay there for a few months to bring up their young, and then, when the weather in the north gets cold in the winter, they fly back to warmer climates in the south. Now, I'd like to talk a bit about how global warming has affected bird migration. One of the effects of global warming has been to make the spring come earlier in the northern regions of the world. When spring comes early, the plants and insects that birds need to bring up their young are also available earlier. Research has shown that quite a lot of birds have started to migrate earlier because of higher temperatures. But unfortunately, for some species, this hasn't been early enough. What I'm saying is that birds that are travelling a long way for breeding may arrive too late to find enough food to feed their young, and their population drops drastically. Scientists are currently researching more about this. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions eighteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions eighteen to twenty. Now I thought I'd finish by just briefly describing a few different patterns of migration.、Uh, migration varies with the type of bird and the area they come from. For example, one kind of migration is partial migration. This means that some birds in a particular species will migrate and others won't. It usually depends on how the weather affects food supplies, and very often happens in the tropics. In another migratory pattern, a bird called an Arctic tern migrates the whole length of the globe, from the North Pole to the South. The Arctic tern travels between twelve and fifteen thousand kilometers each way when it migrates in a complete circle around the world. It's quite amazing, right? And lastly. 
I'd like to mention a pattern which isn't nearly as spectacular, but is very interesting. And this is the way many birds migrate across North America. In this pattern, the birds fly northwards in the west of the country and then back south again in the east. So, if you imagine it, they're actually migrating in a circular pattern, like the hands of a clock, not in a straight line, as we might think. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two students who will discuss a project they're working on together. You have thirty seconds to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Hey Jess, glad you could make it. We've got a lot to discuss. Hi Matt. Yes, sorry I'm a bit late. I did bring all my notes with me. Yes, me too. Where shall we start? Well, I think it would be a good idea to clarify our objectives just one more time. Yes, good idea. Okay, here we are. We need to record, photograph, and identify the plant species in ten one square meter plots. Does it say anything about where these plots should be and how they should be laid out? Ah, here it is. It says that all the plots need to be no more than ten meters apart. And how do we choose them? Ah, this is the fun part. I remember this. Here we are. Make a one meter square frame using bamboo sticks available from the department stores. Yes, we've we've already done that. I know. I'm just reading the whole section. Okay. One person stands roughly in the middle of the chosen area and throws the frame. The other person uses a tape to mark out the square where the frame landed and returns frame to thrower. The thrower then turns a few degrees on the spot and throws again. The thrower must turn slightly after each throw and vary the force of the throw until after the tenth throw they are pointing in almost the same direction as the first. That sounds a bit complicated. That's only because it's all in writing. It's just a simple throw, turn, throw, turn, throw, turn until we have ten squares. And I guess you want to do the throwing. Well, if you don't mind, I'm sure you'll be more accurate at marking the squares. Yes, I am sure I am, and I'm sure you've got a stronger throwing arm. You now have thirty seconds to look at questions twenty-eight to thirty. Okay, good. We've got that sorted. Now we need to decide where to go. Yes, I've been thinking about that, and I've brought the map. Ah, well done. I forgot mine. Now I've identified three possible locations, but they've all got some disadvantages. Okay, fire away. Well, the area around this lowland marsh could be interesting. There'll be a lot of interesting water plants here. Looks good, but what's the problem? Mainly that it's already a designated nature reserve, and I think there's already been a lot of research done here. 
Ah, I see. Well, I'd rather do something that's new and can be useful. I agree. That's why I identified this area further west. See, here, behind the beach. Oh, yes, I see. That area there, where it's flat, but quite high. Exactly. If you look a bit further inland, you'll see that there are hills which will protect that area from strong north winds. I see. Excellent. But what's the problem? Just that it may not be very interesting. We know that the geology there is not conducive to a wide variety of plants. Mm, I agree. So what's your last idea? Well, I think this one is a bit of a winner, although I did want to show you the other two. Look up here on the north coast. Where? See this bay? Well, I know that there's been quite a lot of studies done here, but a bit further to the east behind this headland. No one has ever looked at that. Well, I certainly couldn't see any studies. That is interesting. And the plant life could be a bit different because of the shelter from the wind the headland provides. Exactly. Brilliant, Jessica. That's a great idea. We'll go there. Thanks. Now all we have to decide is when is a good time. Well... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk on two famous American presidents. As you listen, fill the missing information in the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. John F. Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln lived in different times and had very different family and educational backgrounds. Kennedy lived in the 20th century, while Lincoln lived in the 19th century. Kennedy was born in 1917, whereas Lincoln was born more than 100 years earlier in 1809. As for their family backgrounds, Kennedy came from a rich family, but Lincoln's family was not wealthy. Because Kennedy came from a wealthy family, he was able to attend expensive private schools. He graduated from Harvard University. Lincoln, on the other hand, had only one year of formal schooling. In spite of his lack of normal schooling, he became a well-known lawyer. He taught himself law by reading law books. Lincoln was, in other words, a self-educated man. In spite of these differences in Kennedy and Lincoln's backgrounds, some interesting similarities between the two men are evident. In fact, many books have been written about the strange coincidences in the lives of these two men. For example, take their political careers. Lincoln began his political career as a U.S. congressman. Similarly, Kennedy also began his political career as a congressman. Lincoln was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1847. Kennedy was elected to the House in 1947. They went to the Congress just 100 years apart. Another interesting coincidence 
is that each man was elected president of the United States in a year ending with the number six zero. Lincoln was elected president in 1860, and Kennedy was elected in 1960. Furthermore, both men were president during years of civil unrest in the country. Lincoln was president during the American Civil War. During Kennedy's term of office, civil unrest took the form of civil rights demonstrations. Another striking similarity between the two men was that, as you probably know, neither lived to complete his term in office. Lincoln and Kennedy were both assassinated while in office. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, after only one thousand days in office. Lincoln was assassinated in 1865, a few days after the end of the American Civil War. It's rather curious to note that both presidents were shot while they were sitting next to their wives. These are only a few examples of the uncanny and unusual similarities between the destinies of these two American men, who had a tremendous impact on the social and political life of the United States. And the imagination of the American people. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Welcome to our channel. Today in this video, I'll discuss with you a cue card. And our cue card question is: Describe a time when you had to wait in a long line. When it was, how long the queue or line was, what it was about, how you felt about waiting in this long line. So we sorry, long queue or yeah, long line. So we have to answer these four question in our cue card that. when you waited for something long in a line and how long the queue was what it was about and uh, means what you were doing in that line for what you were waiting for and you have to tell that how you felt about this experience of waiting in a queue long queue truth to be told i do not particularly appreciate waiting uh, i am a kind of you know impatient person so i do not appreciate waiting i am a quite impatient kind of person i understand that one needs to wait in queue for everyday items such as movie tickets banks atm withdrawals and so on but owing to technological advancements this is no longer the case means now we do not have to wait you know in long lines of atms or whatever we can simply transfer through google pay and all right so owing to ad, uh, technological advancements this is no longer the case it has simplified everything for people from money transfer to movie and vacation ticket bookings either for the movies or tra traveling okay so if you are booking the tickets for moving or traveling you can easily book it we do not have to wait in long queues however in the past technology was not so flourished i recalled a trip to my aunt's house 15 year ago and i elected to travel means i chose i opted to travel by train because i favor trains over buses taxis or private vehicles for long distances so i prefer traveling by train instead of buses taxis or private vehicles but i might get up on the wrong side of the bed means it was very bad day it was my bad luck that uh, it's a idiom that i might got get up on the wrong side of the bed i might got up because we are writing for the past so i might got up on the wrong side of the bed on that day as i had to wait for so long for the tickets i waited for an hour because the line was so long that i was afraid that i would miss the train and might have to wait for 2 to 2 hour 2 to 3 hours for the next one so i was you know uh, under so much pressure that i was waiting from 
one hour for i was standing in the line for one hour for getting the tickets and i was also afraid that i would might miss the this train because of this delay or I, then i had to wait for 2 to 3 hours for the next train i was completely drained exhausted because the system was down and 30 people were in line ahead of me so uh, before me 30 more people were standing in the line it was the first time i had to wait for something so long since i needed to get there and wanted to surprise my cousin on her birthday so it 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 was urgent so that's why i waited in a line in a long line else i might have changed my mind because as i told you i am an impatient person because i am impatient and cannot wait for extended period of time train booking was undoubtedly available at that time also but it was not for last minute preparations means you know we you we need to book the tickets in advance so once had to book one had to book the train uh book the train 15 to 20 days in advance but now because of technological advancements everything has changed one may easily book tickets and pay for them online through applications like google pay paytm and others so i am talking about the 15 year ago when i traveled to my aunt's home so at that time you know uh, most of us like middle class people prefer traveling through passenger trains right for that we have we need to wait in the long lines but now due to technological advancements we can book the ticket easily easily online and we can pay for the tickets as well so this was for today if you like the video do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel i'll meet you in the next video till then bye bye take care